and here we have the new APS-C 6600 and hi. Hi, so I'm Ben Pilling, I'm Technical Marketing Manager for Sony Europe for digital imaging and this is the Alpha 6600. So this is our latest in our line of APS-C uh, E-mount mirrorless cameras. It has amazing autofocus features within it. So it has our real-time tracking technology. That comes from our Alpha 9 version 5 firmware. So that technology is able to actually identify a subject. You can tell the camera to track a subject. So either using a focus point or the touch screen, you can select a subject. And after that, rather than trying to keep a focus point on a subject, the intelligent, artificial intelligence inside the camera will enable it to follow it around the screen. So there it's looking at eye information, face information, color information, pattern information, and also distance. So for example, uh, in the image, if the camera, if, if you're trying to focus on a person and it can see uh, that, that you're shooting a person, it will be able to focus on the eye. If it can't see the eye, but it can identify the face, it will do face detection. So if your face is turned to the side and it's not able to uh, see fully the eyes, it will do face detection. If the person turns round, because it recognizes them as a person and it's looking at color and also pattern and distance information, it will still stay locked onto them. So even if they turn their head away, it still actually tracks them all around. And using all that information, it means it can intelligently track a subject. That's not just for people, but it can use all that information to be able to do that. That's also working together with our real-time eye autofocus. So that is the latest version of our IAF. And that, that will also work in video as well, yes. This is the R4. Now, every new Sony camera is going to have the video IF. So Which we, is very cool, right? we can't promise uh, what specifications will be, but you're right. Since the Alpha 7R Mark IV, we introduced IAF on video. That's also included in the Alpha 6600. So while you're shooting video, having focus on the eye, of course, is crucially important for video as well as stills. And that can be enabled again in video with the touch tracking, so you can just press on a subject and it'll be able to follow it throughout so the frame. Phase detect pixels. Yes. So and, uh, we. This is the latest way of doing that. Yeah, so we have 425 phase detection autofocus pixels built into the image sensor. The camera itself can focus in 0.02 of a second, and it's covering pretty much most of the image sensor right the way across. So wherever your subject is within the, sh within the frame, then you'll be able to focus on it. In terms of still images, of course, that's going to be great, great for tracking moving subjects and shooting up to 11 frames per second, but also for video, having that constant focus on your subject. Of course, like our other cameras, we have settings for video in there in terms of the smoothness of the change of autofocus. So do you want a cinematic slow change of focus? Do you want it to be a quicker change of focus? And how long do you want it to, to decide that it's going to change focus if something moves in front? Do you want it to jump onto another subject or do you want to try and ignore that subject that's passing in front? Does that so, mean you have to uh, choose in the settings what you want? Or can you just use the default that's configured? So you can use the default settings. They're put, they're put as standard. But if you know that you want to do something particularly, you can go in there and customize. So out the box, it's going to work great for you. But if people are really wanting a, a particular result, then you can customize the options within there. On top of that, of course, it's 4K built in with 4K HDR. We now have a headphone jack as well. So on the side here, we have the microphone jack, but you also see we've got a headphone jack. So if you're wanting to monitor the audio of that while you're recording, we think it's going to be great for a lot of content creators because you have the 180 degree flip screen. And the, you've got the microphone, microphone preamp is high quality. So again, like I say, we're very satisfied with our uh, quality of our microphone preamp within there. We think that a lot of people will, will want to use this, but also we have uh, new microphones like our ECM B1M, which is an amazing new microphone which we've developed, which has uh, interchangeable directivity. It's also working with a digital signal, which it is common. Digital doesn't work on this one. Right? It, it is not a digital multi-interface tune here, but what happens with the new microphone, the ECM B1M, is that if you have a signal in analog, as it's transferred, as it travels in analog, it can pick up noise on the signal. With our new microphone, it will convert it immediately into digital. As it, before it goes back into the camera, it converts it back to analog and back in the camera again to digital. So it has a mini jack output. No, no, no. It's still going in through the MI shoe. So oh. the so the MI shoe here is an analog MI shoe. However, what you have, for example, on the Alpha 7R Mark IV is a digital MI shoe. It still has the analog connections as well. So the likes of an Alpha 7R Mark IV, you can still use our older analog microphones. And likewise, the new microphone, although it's designed primarily as digital use, the way it actually processes the signal digitally 
here first before converting it to analog reduces the noise and it can send it analog into here through the multi-interface shoe so you can use it completely without battery and get the great results of that also with the great directivity on there as well. I'm very excited about this new shotgun microphone. It sounds like it could be great. I haven't heard the samples yet, but I'm thinking there's probably some very good noise cancelling, like very good shotgun system, so, right? So, so it cancels everything on the side. Uh, the microphone, the ecm one m has eight capsules running along it, and it's able to <laughs> understand where sound is coming from. So you can set it between three different settings. You've got an omnidirectional, which basically gets 360 degrees, see it, 360 degrees sound. But additionally, there's a medium setting, which you imagine you're doing an interview with two or three people. It gives a narrower reach, but can still get those within there. And on top of that, there's a super directional, where if you're one person speaking to the camera, camera, then you can use that on there as well. We also include in that microphone no noise cuts, which is a new feature. It's very much related to our headphone technology of noise cancelling, where if you have continuous noise, so if you imagine air conditioning, or you imagine you're in a busy street where there's lots of people milling by, it can listen to continuous noise and help reduce it out and help it cut it out exactly so it can intelligently so imagine you're by the motorway there's lots of cars continuous noise again it can help reduce that out but again that can still be used for content creators along with the 6600 who have got the 4k quality the 4k hdr three point field microphone and a headphone jack as well when I saw that shotgun mic i was thinking oh, great it's going to be a never new camera but it's not on this one, the digital connection itself. No, but you're and still able to. You're still able to use the microphone with here as well. It's fully compatible with the likes of the 6600, and you can still use that microphone with the likes of 6500 or 6400 and other models as well. And it has the mini jack also. No, no, it's uh, it multi, multi, multi no multi interface shoe because the point is that you want to reduce the travel of the analog signal. So, so, so if you use it here, it's going to block the screen, right? So there's no way to use it outside. Unfortunately, with that microphone, not but we still have uh, the options for the 3.5 mm so jack here. So it depends which way you want to go. We still give you the option for 3.5 mm uh, jack within here, but you, you can have, like I say, the... Uh, and it's it's not fragile system, this this setup is, uh, is strong? So like I say, we we test our, our products and we, we believe that it's uh, as strong as it should be. Of course, you should always take care of your product, but here we have magnesium alloy bodies, uh, but within that, and of course, we try to put a firm frame in on the LCD as well within that. This is a very nice new, new uh, exciting lens, no? Yeah, so this is um, uh, our new 16 to 55 millimeter f2.8 G lens. So this is designed for APS-C. You can see it actually still keeps a very compact solution. So here, like I say, it's not very long, it's not very heavy, but it's a very advanced lens which we're, in, which we're offering now for our APS-C users. It means you can get that constant f2.8 aperture all the way through from 16 up to 55 millimeter. You get the likes of a focus hold button on the side. This can be customized. So again, if you want to use it for different customizable features, you can put that on there as well. And we think it's a great addition for our APS-C users out there or people who are using the likes of a 6500, a 6400 or something like that as a backup camera to their other camera as well. It's equivalent to 24 to 70 full frame? Yeah, pretty much. So it's a 1.5 times crop. So it's giving you a bit more than a 24 to 70 wood on there as well. But it's but not G Master, it's a G. What's it's a G series. G and G Master. So G-Series are uh, our premium line, line of lenses which we inherited also from Minolta from, and we also inherited from Minolta a lot of uh, very good optical engineers. Since the launch of Alpha back in 2006, we had Zeiss lenses and G-Lenses. Of course, the Zeiss lenses, we worked together with Zeiss to develop those. The G-Lenses are our own premium uh, lenses from our side. However, in recent years, we've introduced G-Master. G-Master is basically looking at the lenses of tomorrow because at the moment, of course, a lot of uh, cameras are using old film lenses. Now, film always, like I say, had a finite resolution, whereas our sensors, the megapixels, goes higher, higher, and higher. The concept behind G Master is that they're tomorrow's lenses today. They're designed because, as you know, we make sensors, we know what is uh, coming up in the industry, what's coming up because we are the number one player in the sensor market. We are able to uh, design our lenses for sensors that our product planners know are coming in the future. So internally, we test them to very, very high MTF to make sure those are suitable. Whereas sometimes, people might be using old digital SLR lenses, adapting them onto cameras from old film cameras, which are not high enough resolution for the sensors that you're trying to find today. Along with that, the G Master also tries to give you a great combination of uh, great resolution combined with great bokeh. 
So that combination is actually very hard to do. But our G series still actually have a great reputation as a high quality lens. It's still producing a good resolution and good it, contrast within there. Does it do any stabilization in the lens or it only does on the sensor? So this, uh, this lens itself doesn't have stabilization built into it, uh, but with the likes of the 6600 and 6500, you still have uh, the stabilization built into the body, so you're able to manage that. And like I say, we think it's a good all-round package with these put together as well. How is the stabilization compared to 6500 and 6600? Is there an upgrade in the stabilization? So it's a, a very similar stabiliza uh, stabilization system built within there. Um, it's still going to work on five axes, working, like I say, with your pitch, your X, Y, and roll. Um, and again, like I say, it's going to be a very effective system within there, whether you're using for still images or for movies. And this has a Z battery, so does that mean 50% longer battery life? Or? So yeah, so we have a Z series battery. You can see the grip is also larger on here, so it's a larger size of grip. Um, and that's because you've got the Z series battery on there. It's about 2.2 times the amount of battery that you had uh, on uh, on the predecessors. So that's going to be amazing whether more you're a still double. shooter. Yeah, more than double. Um, it's actually tested, I think, with the LCD screen to about 850 shots to SEPA standard. Normally with manufacturers, not just us, you get more than SEPA test to. So if you imagine you're going to get minimum, minimum 850 shots, uh, most, most likely real usage is going to be a lot higher. You can go out shooting all day. A lot of video guys are also going to be very uh, pleased that they're going to be able to shoot for a lot longer. So we don't have a 29 minute, minute limit on here, no. So if you're going to record a video, again, uh, there's no 29 minutes. The full minute. battery is going to be used. The full SD card is going to be filled up. So yeah, if you keep going with the power and you keep going, then Maybe like the battery can... is more than an hour and a half or something. I, I haven't tested personally the exact extent of the battery, but it'd be quite interesting to see how long it goes. But it's going to give you great capability to be able to do whatever you want on your projects, no matter how long you want to record. So there's no crap on the uh, 24p, but there's a small crap on the 30p, right? Yeah. So if you're shooting. 24 or 25p there's no crop on the 30p there's just a, a slight crop in on there as well but it gives you high quality 4k footage with full pixel readout without pixel binning so that's going to give you great detail and great color accuracy within there of course on top of that as i mentioned we've got 4k hdr so you can shoot hdr footage directly within the camera you can shoot in hlg suitable for uh, 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 applicable a -bit, a -bit. it is a bit footage but again like i say you're able to produce some amazing images within on here and you have all the picture profiles and the advanced video features, zebras, manual focus aids like peaking and so on built within there as well. You find a lot of the Alpha 9 um, autofocus features uh, within here as well, so a lot of the customizations on autofocus settings are also built into the likes of the 6600. So as well as having that real-time tracking and real-time eye autofocus uh, for still image and also in on video, you're able to get a lot of the customizations also that you get with our high-end models in addition to Is this. Is it a little bit like a mini A9? Uh, is it like, how many frames can you do uh, without sound and all that stuff? So it's able to shoot at uh, 11 frames per second uh, with the mechanical shutter, but shooting silent, uh, it's going to be slowing down to around seven or so frames per second. Uh, seven or eight, sorry, I forget, I forget off the top. So the A9 does 20, that's because the A9 has a different type of sensor. The sensor inside the A9 is what we call Exmo RS. It's a stacked sensor, which means that it has an extra layer for wiring of the sensor underneath. So you have much more wires uh, on the sensor of the A9, which are put on a different level and so it can output the information really quickly and this is why the A9 can shoot 20 frames per second with full resolution with no blackout in the viewfinder so uh, in terms of that structure we also implemented that same same structure on our latest RX100 series the RX100 Mark 7 so there you also get a model which can shoot 20 that's frames inch, right? that's one inch sensor and, it, stacked. and that, it's stacked one inch sensor but it's built with exactly the same architecture that we use on the Alpha 9 so it's also the first time with an RX100 series that we've been able to do no blackout between shooting. So even when you're taking a picture, you can still see the live image, you can still focus on your subject. It's measuring focus 60 times per second with that RX100 Mark 7 on there as well. Uh, not yet, but as you know, like I say, Sony are the leaders in the sensor market. We have over 50% market share of the, of the sensor market uh, in the camera industry. And of course, we're always trying to give our best to our customers, but of course, there's many demands. Some people are asking for things on RX series, some people are asking APS-C, some people are asking full frame. So it's uh, very difficult for our guys in Tokyo to, uh, to balance out the requests. And in terms of being market leader, uh, I think two or three, four years ago, people would say that the Canon Dual Pixel was the market in terms of quality of the autofocus, would you claim that you're the best now? That's not for me to say, that's for you guys to say, uh, but what I would say is that our focus speed on the likes of A6600 is 0.02 of a second. So we've come from 
in the past, people wouldn't choose mirrorless cameras because of the focus speed, as one of the reasons. This is like, say, 0.02 of a second it can focus, but on top of that, you have the fact that it has our real-time tracking built within there. And anybody who's tried it or has read up about it will understand that it really is an industry leader in terms of recognizing a subject and, and, track, and track it, tracking it, it, being able to track it across the frame, forward and backward, and actually understanding this is a subject by the color, by the pattern, by the distance, by face, by eye information. And this is really revolutionary in the, mar in the market because no, no other recognition basically does as much as this. We're used to as photographers choosing a focus point and then trying to keep that subject on the focus point. Where this, like I say, will really enable you to set a subject and then the camera with the artificial intelligence will be able to track it across the screen. This is, I think, the most important selling point is the autofocus. I'm filming right now, I'm so kind of sorry. There's a lot of pulsating backgrounds. This is not going to happen here. There's not going to be these pulsating lights. It's just going to stay on the face. It's going to very, very rarely go out of focus, right? So hopefully it's going to remain in focus throughout. But because it's able to use that intelligence system within there, on our system, as you mentioned before, we're using the phase detection autofocus. So that's very good at tracking the subject and being able to, to also update and predict where it's going to go. In addition to that, like I say, we also have motors built into our lenses, which are specifically designed for movie autofocus. In our latest lenses, as you mentioned here with the 16 to 55, we have what we call our XD linear motor. So this is a very powerful uh, motor, but it's designed, uh, it's frictionless. So unlike a lot of traditional SLR lenses or things like a super sonic wave motor technology where you have uh, rotational movement being changed into linear movement for the focus change. Our XD linear motors are the motors we have in our 600 millimeter f4 and 400 millimeter 2.8, so some of the lenses we actually have up behind us here. And those lenses have now been put into these APS-C cameras. We work together with the body team and the lens team to understand video autofocus. So there's something called wobbling. Wobbling sounds bad, but wobbling is good. It's basically the lens is able to continuously check the focus of the subject without actually changing the focus. And this means that if the subject then starts to move, because it's continuously checking, it's able to move with it without going out of focus. And as such, the combination of our body technology along with the motors and the intelligence in the lenses means that for video, hopefully, we're able to stick on your subject quite accurately. So how would the other focus performance compare on this lens compared to like a Sigma or not? No, you can't talk about Sigma, but how, all these different lenses have different performance in autofocus or? So actually at Sony, we really concentrate on uh, linear motors. So you'll find the vast majority of our mirrorless lineup actually have what we call linear motors. There are different motors in different lenses. Basically, that's just because we try to consider the all-round product. So for example, uh, are we trying to make it smaller and lighter? Uh, are, we, are we making it bigger? That doesn't matter and so on and so forth. As such, because we concentrate on linear motors, which don't have rotational movement, which has then uh, mechanical, mechanical gears to change into linear movement of the uh, focus elements, it means that the vast majority of our mirror lenses use linear, and it means for video, it's fantastic because there's no friction, there's no, there's no uh, stopping and starting, going back and forth, and it's able to autofocus really well in uh, in movies. So, but this one will be in an even better level. Well, I I, I I think you'll find for video it performs exceptionally well because what I mentioned this XD linear motor, which is coming from the 400 millimeter and 600 millimeter. Other lens have this technology. So this we also uh, this is the first one on our APS-C range which has this, uh, but it's also something which incorporates onto our other new lenses, 70 to 350 millimeter G for APS-C as well. All right, that's really cool. And um, it's, it's, so this is a little bit thicker here because of the IBIS, right? So uh, a, couple of, a couple of reasons. When you look at the body, you've got the battery, you've got the in-body stabilization as well. So <laughs> because of those things, the body is a little bit thicker, but in general, you'll find that it's a very similar style to our other cameras. It does have a bigger grip, so some people do like the bigger grip going within there. And, and we also add in some extra custom buttons as well. So when you look on the likes of an Alpha 6400, you have a custom button here. You can customize lots of buttons. So you can customize this button, you can click and customize this button, you can customize left, right, down, and delete button as well. But what you find on the 6600 is that we have actually have two buttons on top. So unlike the one we have here, we actually have two buttons going up on top to customize. And we also add an additional C3 in on here. So if you're used to using like an AF on feature or something going on here, it fits nicely in on that. So you get even more customizable options going within the 6600 as well. Nice, really cool. That's awesome to see uh, exciting new APS-C.